like a broken record playing the same lousy lyrics over and over again. Every year sunscreen choices seem to be stuck on repeat with many of the products offering inferior sun protection and potentially harmful and unsafe ingredients. But what exactly is the trouble with ingredients in sunscreens? What makes a good, safe and effective sunscreen? How much sunscreen do we actually need to apply? And what are my top favorite sunscreen recommendations including those for dry skin, sensitive skin and acne prone skin is what we are going to discuss in today's video. Hello and welcome back to the Dr. Doctor Academy. I'm Dr. Sanova Doctor, fondly known as Mrs. Dr. Doctor. I'm a board certified dermatologist practicing integrative and holistic dermatology and I am your skin and health coach. We discuss skin care, holistic health and everything related to lead a healthy and happy life. So if that is something that you're interested in and passionate about, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because that is the only way you can get notified every time a new video gets released. As you're already aware, today's video is all about sunscreen application and I will actually apply it for you so that you come to know how it appears and feels. Like you won't come to know how it feels but you'll be able to see it. So without any further ado, let's begin. Sunscreen products are intended to be applied to the body every day for life and the companies that make the sunscreen ingredients are supposed to test them for their short term and long term implications and possible side effects. But in 2019, the FDA found only two ingredients that have been used in sunscreen so far to be safe and all the others were linked with some possible implication right from carcinogenesis, hormonal imbalance and many other things. I have discussed it in detail in the video on sunscreen safety. I will add the link link in the description below as well so make sure you go through that so what makes a good effective and safe sunscreen if you are wondering whether a tube of sunscreen that you have already is safe for yourself your little ones or for your other family members as well then here are some recommendations to assess Number one, try to make sure that the only active ingredient in our sunscreen is zinc oxide since that has been found to be the safest so far. The other ingredients that are present in your sunscreen should be those that you are able to recognize. Even some of your chemistry background will help you do so but they should not be really strange names that you can't even pronounce. Now some very good companies as well do end up adding a few chemicals which are not actually needed but they are in very small proportions so I will let you know which ones are those. And if your sunscreen has added antioxidants like vitamin E, carrot oil, shea butter, green tea, sunflower oil, they're very good for the skin and they help protect the skin in their own way as well. So the more the better. Now let's discuss how much sunscreen actually needs to be applied. A general rule of thumb is to apply the sunscreen at least 15 to 30 minutes before you step out in the direct sun so that the sunscreen has completely dried off and formed an effective layer on the outer surface of your skin. I like using the teaspoon rule to guide you on the amount of sunscreen that is recommended to be applied. It is said that roughly 3 ml, that is slightly more than half a teaspoon, that is the amount that you need to apply over your face, neck and each arm. And 6 ml, that is roughly almost an entire teaspoon, is how much you need to apply over your chest, back and each leg. Now you don't have to obsess about how much is being applied as long as you make sure that all the covered aspects of your body has a generous layer of sunscreen present over it. One important thing that I want to emphasize, I have heard many people comment that today it's cloudy, I do not need to apply, there is nothing like that. 80% of the sun's harmful ultraviolet light can still cross the clouds and you need to apply a sunscreen even if it is cloudy, raining, hail, snow, sunshine. 
every single day if you are stepping out in the direct sun between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. specifically but ideally between 10 and 4 or 5 p.m. then make sure you have a good layer of sunscreen to protect you. I want you to remember that sunscreen is just one of the ways that you can protect yourself from the harmful effects of ultraviolet light. The best form of sun protection is actually avoiding direct sunlight. Remember some sun is okay because that will actually boost your vitamin D production but nothing more than 5 minutes in direct sunlight. Keep these points in mind every time you think of sun protection. Number 1. Seek shade whenever possible. A general rule of thumb is if your shadow is shorter than you are, then seek shade. Wear protective sun clothing, lightweight, long sleeve shirts, pants, a wide brimmed hat, sunglasses especially when you're out in the direct sun and if you're going to be out on the beach or doing a sporting activity where you are going to be exposed to the harsh sun for a very long time then using sun protective clothing having UPF that is the ultraviolet protective factor label on them will also be very helpful. Avoid tanning beds. If you want to have a tanned appearance then please use a self tanning product under the guidance of your dermatologist and doctor and don't forget to use a sunscreen even then. And the last thing that I want you to keep in mind is be very careful when you're near water, snow or sand because these surfaces have the capability of reflecting more damaging rays and that can lead to very serious sunburns. Now we come to the part that you all have been waiting for and have been asking for so long. Please remember that my recommendations are solely based on my opinion, my personal experience and my research. None of the products have been sponsored and there is no right or wrong to this. You might have experience with something in particular that you might like and recommend and I would love to know them so please make sure you leave your suggestion in the comments below. If you have seen my sunscreen safety video, you know by now that I am all in for a pure physical or a mineral sunscreen. And a small trick that I like to employ is I tend to to find those that are safe for babies and children because I know that if they've made it safe for our children, it is safe for adults as well. Another thing that I have heard time and again from my clients is that they do not like that whitish appearance that sunscreens tend to have. I think this is more of a social hype than anything because I have experienced this personally. I have tried it in all my patients of skin of color as well and there is no doubt a slight whitish cast that some sunscreens tend to have greater than the other physical or mineral based sunscreens but it is not that big of a deal that we need to really bother about it so much trust me if you apply it well it gets absorbed and it gets and it blends into your skin within 10 to 15 minutes of its application and if you apply it regularly especially under your makeup you won't even realize that something has been applied over there and many people tell me that what if someone comes to know that I've applied sunscreen and it looks very bad. I think that is kind of a good thing. You are inspiring others to protect themselves and reminding them to apply their sunscreen if they haven't. Not that it is going to be that obvious. I promise I'm going to show it to you myself. But this is just something that I wanted to address. Safety, skin protection is more of a priority. Aesthetics does come in play. But you are gorgeous and you will always be. Don't worry. We first discuss the best mineral sunscreens for sensitive skin. Now if you have skin that is really sensitive, that becomes red and irritated very easily on application of certain products or when you go out in the sun, you become red very quickly, then make sure you choose a sunscreen with good ingredients as far as possible. I have two options for you today. The first is the Blue Lizard Australian Sunscreen for Sensitive Skin. Now they have different kinds of sunscreens that are available and the Blue Lizard Sunscreen is an Australian brand so I know that they take their sunscreens very seriously because Australia or Australia has the highest rate of melanoma. They have a very good option for sensitive skin and I think it works very well for most skin types as well. 
Remember all the sunscreens that we are going to discuss today have an SPF of 25 or 30 and above and they are all broad spectrum sunscreens. We discussed what broad spectrum means in the last video so you do not have to worry and they are all mineral based ones so you know that everything is taken care of. It is just going to bounce off that light and nothing is going to get absorbed into your skin. Another great option for sensitive skin is the Aveeno Kits Zinc Oxide Mineral Sunscreen. Now this has been designed for sensitive skin. It is water and sweat resistant as well. Quite honestly, this is one of the first mineral sunscreens that I actually stuck to. It is formulated with oats so it helps keep the sensitive skin moisturized and non-irritated. It is not one of the cleanest sunscreens that I know but it is a very good option. The next recommendation is a mineral sunscreen for dry skin. This one is the Sun Balm by Tubes & Co Organics. It is a natural tallow based balm with non nano zinc oxide and I love that it is non nano zinc because I know that it is not going to be absorbed into the body and I know it's not going to create any havoc as you see in research showing what nanotechnology is capable of doing and I love the fact that it has tallow. Now tallow is loaded with vitamin A, D3, K2, E, B12. It is known to fight off any wrinkle producing free radicals and it serves as an excellent moisturizer. It has a wonderful clean ingredient list that I love. It contains grass fed tallow, organic olive oil, 20% non nano zinc oxide, coconut, vanilla extract and that's it. Need I say more? This is slightly on the pricey side but I think it works very well for all skin types. It is very moisturizing, very very nourishing and is very safe and effective. So if you need something for daily use that blends in well and forms a nice base or a primer, this is one good option. Now let's come to my best mineral sunscreens in general. It can be used by all skin types. Number 4 on my list is the Think Sport Kids SPF 50 mineral sunscreen. This brand has super clean ingredients and it is loved by many. It ranks number 1 on the EWG database. The only thing is it is more whiter and has a more pasty feel to it but it goes better than most of the natural sunscreens that are available out there. On number 3 we have the Raw Elements Face and Body Sunscreen. Now this is a very eco-friendly brand. It was first developed by a lifeguard. It has large zinc oxide particles than most of the others as well so we are not scared about having nano zinc present in this. Another bonus is it does not appear as pasty as most of the other natural brands. They also have a very nice tinted facial stick so I think it works perfect if you are bothered about that white pasty look. Number two on my list is the green screen organic sunscreen by Cabana. Now Cabana is another very clean and safe sunscreen that I have found to date. As with most other ones that I have shared so far, it is reef safe, it is 100% eco-friendly and I really like reserving this one when you're going to be outdoors for a very long period of time because this does have a chalky feel and appearance to it but it is super effective, very clean, very nice. I have seen really horrible skin burns and I think it is very important to take sun protection seriously. And my current favorite this year is the Sun Love Everyday Sheer Sunscreen by Anna Marie. You must have realized so far that I have chosen all sunscreens that have zinc oxide only as the active ingredient. This is one of the cleanest and safest sunscreens I have found. One look at the ingredient list and you'll understand why I am very fond of it. It uses non nano zinc again which is a big plus for me as well. It is slightly pricier than most of the commercial ones that you will see but I think it is well worth it. I know some of you have exclaimed that it is so safe that you can eat it too but I wouldn't try that. Other very great options to consider are the Think Baby sunscreen, Badger sunscreen and there are actually many companies that are doing a fantastic job of making clean and safe and very effective sunscreens available so I am very happy with that fact because quite honestly during my dermatology training I was exposed to the types of sunscreens that were shown through us through various pharmaceutical companies 
companies. So do your research and let me know and let our entire community know as well because we really grow, thrive and shine together. I will leave all the links that I found in the description below so that it makes it easier for you all. Another thing that I wanted to mention is if you're in Europe, they have stricter standards for sun protection than that present in the United States. So you definitely have a better range of sunscreens available there. Now it's time to do what I promised. So I will apply a physical sunscreen and show you how it appears in real time. But first I'm going to go and wash my hands and come. I'll be back soon. Alrighty. So today so I have the Aveeno Kids Sensitive Skin Sunscreen on hand right now. I did have very sensitive skin earlier, but it has improved over time. And uh, sometimes I get so mad, there's no control. I've taken just roughly a little more than half a teaspoon as I had told y'all before. So this is how much is what we are going to apply over my face. My thoughts get so bad, I'm like, I might grab a bat, I don't know, my wrath, my blood boils over like, oh god, here goes, I lost all feeling from my head to my toes, you said some shit that I can't let go, so just stay tuned for the rest of the show. Blood boils okay, over like, so um, oh god, here goes. this is after application over my face, and I'm gonna apply over my neck as well. So have you ever felt betrayed, which is how you see things, realize something needs change. So you will notice that white sheen that is coming on initially and it is not actually seen after 5 to 10 minutes. Like now if you see my face and you see my neck, my hair is coming in the way but if you see, see it gets absorbed, you don't even come to know. Now, I had not applied sunscreen for y'all before so that then I could show it to y'all how it appears. So this is how it is. You and come to know. Now you see my hand and you see my face. It is different. Yeah, and um, like I might have slightly fairer skin as compared to the normal skin of color, but um, this is true for everyone that I know. Now, before we go, I want to add another point that please try to skip and avoid those spray sunscreens that are available. I think it just doesn't make sense. Number one, you don't even know the amount that is being applied. If you're going to apply a very thin layer, it is not going to be effective and serve the purpose. And there is also a very high risk of inhaling those ingredients. So just in general, avoid using them. I don't mind using a stick, especially over your face, or a lotion that is available. Alrighty, I hope you found this video helpful. If there is a particular sunscreen that you have in mind and have used or want me to investigate, then make sure you leave it in the comments below. I will try my best to get back as soon as possible. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. As always, continue to glow, thrive and shine always. Stay healthy, stay blessed and stay safe. Sending lots of healthy and happy wishes your way. Take care. See you soon. Do I look like Casper the Friendly Ghost?